people here in America are, are always telling each other or one another to take care. When you say goodbye to somebody, say, well, take care. Sign off a letter many times, take care. What does it mean to take care? It's actually very close to the sense of what the Buddha had to say was be heedful. Or if we could interpret it in that way, it would be a really useful salutation. Because often we interpret it to mean don't get yourself in danger in obvious ways. But there are lots of dangers that we create in ways that are not so obvious. What we do, what we say, what we think has lots of repercussions. It's like throwing a stone in a pond. The ripples head out in all directions, then they bounce off the shore and come back. and. all sorts of interference patterns. And their actions are like that. You throw a stone in the pond, and once the stone is thrown in the pond, you can't stop the ripples. Once we intentionally act in any way, once the action is done, then the results are going to have to ripple out and ripple back. So that's the way in which you should take care. Be careful about what you say, what you do, what you think. Because the ripple effect can go on for a long time in ways that you might not foresee. In fact, the Buddha said that the question of how karma gets worked out is so complex that if you tried to follow every little strand of influence, you'd go crazy. But if you stick by the basic principle that the quality of your intention determines the results you're going to get. You don't have to trace things out. You just keep focusing on the quality of your intention right here, right now. Be careful what you do, careful what you say, be careful what you think. That's when you're sitting here meditating. Be very careful to stay with the breath. Be very careful to notice even the slightest hint that the mind is going to wander off. Catch it and come right back. The more sensitive you are to that potential, the more solid your meditation is going to be, the more solid your concentration. And the more solid your concentration, the more you can see the two go together. So as you're meditating, take care. And even when you get up from the meditation, take care again. We've been receiving some magazines recently. You see a lot of evidence of carelessness. A chance remark that one teacher makes in a, in a magazine can affect people's lives for a long time to come. It may strike them in a certain way, and then they think, gee, this must be, must be the Dharma. And then they take it to heart and live in line with it. And maybe totally off, yet they have no way of knowing if they're not observant. Or you see some people quoting the Buddha, and they're a little off in their quotes, they're careless, sloppy. And yet when they try to draw inferences from those sloppy quotes, then the, the telephone game sets in. A little switch here, a little, a little consonant change there, a little vowel changed here, and all of a sudden the meaning gets totally screwed up. And then from that screwed up inference, another inference can come, and then another one. It just gets further and further away. And people assume that's, that's what the Buddha taught. And they can take it to heart and 
who knows what's going to happen as a result. All kinds of strange things. There's an old Chinese belief that if you mislead people in your teaching, you're going to be blind the next time around. It's that serious. So this is why in our day-to-day -day life we should be very careful about what we say, what we do, what we think. Because it affects us, it affects the people around us. And the more careful you are, the less damage you do. This relates to several qualities that the Buddha taught, jitta, being intent on what you're doing, really paying attention. When you listen, pay attention. When you talk, pay attention. In other words, pay attention both to the things that come into the mind and to the things that go out. And exercise restraint. One of Ajahn Sawat's favorite ways of criticizing somebody is that this is the sort of person who, as soon as something comes into his mind, comes out of his mouth. In other words, there's no filter, there's no quality control. And what you do and what you say. And this is because there's no quality control in what you pay attention to. That's why the issue of appropriate attention is so important. It's not another part of being very careful, noticing what's worthwhile paying attention to and what's not. We focus on the wrong things and they give rise to all kinds of anger, greed, delusion. And then the ripple effect goes rippling out. So we're learning an important skill as we sit here meditating, being very careful to stay with the breath. Not let the slightest thing pull us off. Not let the slightest thing interfere. This is precision work. Because our well-being is precision work as well. After I'd been ordained a couple years, John Fung had me translate some of John Lee. He said it was for the sake of my own meditation. And one of the first questions I had for him was when, when I translate whether he wanted me to be literally accurate or to get the basic meaning. And he said both. Push the and basically he meant push the envelope in both ways. Don't be too casual about throwing away the literal meaning, but don't obscure the deeper meaning as well. He once said that when a John Lee gave sermons, he would be speaking on three levels at once, and it was important to get all three levels in the translation. And so what this did was require that I read a John Lee a lot more carefully than I'd read him before. And pay attention to the phrases that I thought were little throwaway phrases that were simply idiomatic or a peculiarity of Thai that didn't really have much meaning. And you began to realize there was a meaning there. And then it was learning how to be sensitive to what was what was simply idiomatic and what was important to take literally. And that required sensitivity. And the sensitivity I had to develop as a translator translated back into my my meditation. So as a meditator, whatever your jobs are, whether they're sitting here watching the breath or whatever you're doing, always take care to be precise to pay attention to the little details, because a lot of the details can have ripple effects if you're not careful. If you're careful, they can also have a ripple effect in the, in the right direction. So treat life as precision work. 
and treat the meditation as practice for the precision work, an opportunity, you know, a laboratory for making your awareness more and more precise, developing the intensity of your intentness. So you really can sense the little things. It's one of the reasons why life in the monastery is kept to a very simple level. So that the interference patterns of a lot of different duties don't block each other. There are very few things that have to be done. You learn how to do them precisely. Do them well. Even if they seem trivial or minor, the fact that you're doing them is an opportunity to develop good qualities in the mind. So the intentness that you bring, the precision that you bring to all your activities is a part of the practice. It helps your meditation, and of course your meditation in turn helps the precision of your day-to-day -day life. If you put the two of them together, then everything is part of your life here at the monastery becomes a part of the practice, a part of the de development of the mind. I noticed that among John Fung's best lay student meditators were the ones who took their everything in life as a lesson for the practice. <coughs> And living here at the monastery, the principle holds even more so. So whatever you do, take care. <laughs>